News. And Ben joins us now. He was the co-author, along with David Horowitz, The Party of Defeat, released in 2007, 2008, but detailed this political strategy in The Party of Defeat. Ben, welcome. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for looking back. Absolutely. And uh, as you well know, it is important to understand what actually took place, who lied about the lie, and the politics of it all, politics being the art of what's possible. Otto von Bismarck is speaking to what's possible. It doesn't seem possible to be even thinking of putting troops back in. We don't really have an idea of where we're going in our national security strategy, and we have a president that seemingly has abdicated the leadership role of being leader of the free world. But this began with attacks like these from former Vice President Al Gore. Roll it. Those are the feelings that were betrayed by this president. He betrayed this country. He played on our fears. He took America. He took America on an ill-conceived foreign adventure, dangerous to our troops, an adventure that was preordained and planned before 9-11 ever took place. And that was in 2004. But even as early, I mean, as late as Today, we have reports of Bill Clinton this week engaging in that type of rhetoric, maybe not as uh, incendiary, but certainly with the speculation when asked about Dick Cheney's criticism of President Obama. Here's the former president, Bill Clinton. Roll it. Well, I believe, uh, you know, if they hadn't gone to war in Iraq, none of this would be happening. So I think right. it wouldn't be happening in Syria. There wouldn't be well. It might be happening actors. in Syria, but the, what happened in Syria wouldn't have happened in Iraq. Iraq would not have been, in effect, drastically altered as it has been. Now, Ben, that's got to make you curious, especially in light of what you know, which is this: roll it. What if he fails to comply and we fail to act, which gives him yet more opportunities to develop this program of weapons of mass destruction? Well, he will conclude that the international community has lost its will. He will then conclude that he can go right on and do more to rebuild an arsenal of devastating destruction. And someday, some way, I guarantee you, he'll use the arsenal. Ben, that was Bill Clinton advocating for taking out Saddam Hussein. The Iraq Liberation Act, help me out here. What, what, why do we see... I, I was going to say, that yeah. those were very strange words from the man who signed the Iraq Liberation Act is, uh, in his waning days of his presidency. Uh, President Bill Clinton, uh, of course, dedicated himself. Uh, the Iraq Liberation Act said that the United States should make an official policy to change the regime in Iraq. Uh, and during the last days, up to the very last times when he was pardoning uh, you know, um, um, runaway uh, campaign donors and the like, uh, and and dangerous uh, people. He was figuring out ways that he could. Uh, he was noising that he was trying to find insurgent groups in Iraq that would overthrow Saddam Hussein. Literally up to the day of President George W. Bush's uh, inauguration. Uh, I was glad you played Al Gore. I mean, in so many ways, Al Gore really typifies what happened to the Democratic Party during this time. Uh, of course, this all goes back to the first Gulf War in 1990, and Al Gore was one of the few Democrats who supported that war, along with Bill Clinton, which is why they got the nomination in 1992. Democrats didn't want to be on the wrong side of a war again 10 years later. But Al Gore, uh, in his typical fashion, in 1992 attacked George Bush for not going beyond what the U.N. wanted and unilaterally toppling Saddam Hussein at that time. He actually made several campaign speeches about how Bush was wrong, spoke to the National Center for Policy about how we should have toppled Saddam in 1992. Uh, and that was the official policy of uh, the Clinton administration using identical claims and identical intelligence 
to what George W. Bush would use when he was president two years after, well, really a year and a half after Bill Clinton and Al Gore had left office. You have to remember, of course, Al Gore, uh, in the minds of many people, when he made that scathing attack that he betrayed us and betrayed America, uh, everything else that he said would sound like a good old boy. Uh, you know, Al Gore uh, putting it on pretty thick there, but he was president uh, in the minds of many people on the left. He was the real president of the United States who had the election stolen from him by corrupt officials like uh, Kathleen Willey in Florida. Uh, so uh, you had uh, uh, Kathleen Harris, I should say, in Florida. So uh, for you in there. Yes. But uh, you know, Harris had allegedly stolen this election. He was the titular leader of the uh, Democratic Party saying that the president had lied us into war when everyone who wanted to be president voted in, in the Democratic Party, voted for the authorization of the use of force in 2002, had access to the same intelligence that George W. Bush had, had used. And then a few years later, a very few months later, I should say, uh, shortly after the invasion, said they'd been lied to all along. So, Ben, it, there are so many people who understand, certainly, that in war things go sideways and the learning curve there. And we'll talk more about that next hour. We talked about it with our good friend Gordon Kukulu, Colonel Kukulu, about that. But maybe the the idea of a party changing uh, their support for a war is seems to me that violates. I mean, here's Captain Obvious that our differences end at our at the water's edge. We have troops in harm's way, and you're saying that there was a strategy shift politically that superseded the national security interest of the United States, Polit or our national security thereby was sacrificed on the altar of politics. Too strong? Uh, probably not strong enough. Uh, that's exactly what happened. In fact, uh, I, I would go so far as to say that really Democrats were uh, full, of, full of cowardice and political calculation on both sides of the Iraq War. I think that they were inauthentic in their support of the war in the first place. Uh, as I alluded, in 1990, a lot of people who wanted to run for president against George Herbert Walker Bush were unable to because they voted against the war. And his popularity rating after uh, the first Gulf War operation in Desert Storm was in the 90s. So they were unable to run for president. Uh, and then Bill Clinton came along and, and knocked him off of his perch. But 10 years later, they decided they were not going to make that same mistake. They didn't want to be on the wrong side of a popular war. So they voted to authorize a war that probably many of them did not really want to, to prosecute or support uh, and said everything that uh, the administration said. Uh, Wait a second. Real quick. Uh, this is nothing but truth. For a decade. Yeah, this is nothing but truth, though, Ben. Ben, real quick. Real quick. About it. Yeah, oh, Ben, real quick. I, I want to cite what you just said. You said they spoke in support of the war and uh, run up to the war in 2002. Senator John Kerry said this. Roll it. Why is he seeking to develop unmanned airborne vehicles for delivery of biological agents? Does he do all of these things because he wants to live by international standards of behavior? Because he respects international law? Because he's a nice guy underneath it all and the world should trust him? I think it would be naive to the point of grave danger not to believe that left to his own devices, Saddam Hussein will provoke, misjudge, or stumble into a future more dangerous confrontation with the civilized world. He has as much as promised it. And let's get cut 10 ready. Here is what John Kerry said during the 2004 primary debate January 2004, so two years earlier, no, less than two years earlier, he made that statement, and here's asked about his war support and the Iraq war, he had this to say. Roll it. I think it's somewhere in between. I think that uh, there has been an exaggeration and there's been a refocusing. That is where where has the exaggeration been in the threat on terrorism? Well, 45 minutes deployment of weapons of mass destruction, number one. 
aerial vehicles to be able to deliver materials of mass destruction, number two. I mean, I, nuclear weapons, number three. I can run a long list of clear misleading, clear exaggeration. I think this administration's arrogant and ideological policy is taking America down a more dangerous path. I will make America safer than they are. Now get B1 ready. If we could r roll B1, here is John Kerry and then Senator Hillary Clinton again, flashback 2002. That was 2004, here's 2002, roll it. Regime change has been in American policy under the Clinton administration, and it is the current policy. I support the policy. In the four years since the inspectors left, intelligence reports show that Saddam Hussein has worked to rebuild his chemical and biological weapons stock, his missile delivery capability, and his nuclear program. He has also given aid, comfort, and sanctuary to terrorists, including Al-Qaeda members. It is clear, however, that if left unchecked, Saddam Hussein will continue to increase his capacity to wage biological and chemical warfare and will keep trying to develop nuclear weapons. Ben Johnson, party of defeat, two-minute closing argument regarding the Democrats that were just played and outlined in your book that they put America's national security on the altar of politics. Go, sir. And not only did they put American security in, in danger, but they voted to put American soldiers, so the people who were willing to die for this country, into danger in the crosshairs of al-Qaeda in Iraq. And then they voted to cut off their funding, say that their president was lying, and demonize the troops themselves by saying that they were torturing people in Abu Ghraib and that they were uh, victims, uh, they were perpetrating mass slaughter in places like Haditha, where almost every single person there was acquitted. None of them were convicted of the charges they were accused of. That's exactly what they were willing to do in order to further their own plans to demonize President George W. Bush and ultimately elect one of their own. We see the politics uh, of that influencing their voting. We see how it's playing out today. The president, who couldn't care less about the genocide that's going on in Iraq of Iraqi Christians and uh, who is turning his back on American allies throughout the region. It's dangerous, but it began because they put politics ahead not only of U.S. security, not only regional security, but the lives of U.S. soldiers in harm's way. The most despicable statement that was made during this was made by Harry Reid. We all remember this before the surge, but Harry Reid had this to say. Roll it. Now, I believe myself that the Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, and you have to make your own decision as to what the president knows, that this war is lost. So if we look for evidence of what was going on here, Ben, what advice do you have for us taking this in, maybe for the first time, maybe understanding just how, and he said that in 2007, by the way, as the surge was going, get, get, it was starting to get going. What advice do you have? Because some people accepted Bush lied, people died. We knew that not to be true. We exposed that. You've exposed that. What do you say? I think both political parties are going to realign along the uh, lines of political, uh, of political orientation on foreign policy. The Democratic Party we've seen has ruled the United States with that bush lied people died ideology uh, that was exemplified by Barack Obama in 2002. He said that uh, the entire war was based in order to be a distraction from the poor economy. Now, he's talking about going back into Iraq, so you can put two and two together. I think in the United States, uh, in the Republican Party, you see everything from Ron Paul to Peter King, and they're going to have to uh, find a coalescing point, uh, probably somewhere in the middle, perhaps uh, exemplified by someone like Ted Cruz, that puts U.S. security first, is not uh, committed to a radical ideology, either putting boots on the ground everywhere, yes. in the style of maybe a John McCain, or being completely uh, Fortress America uh, in, in certain other styles. Uh, and I, in, unless foreign policy is a major issue at this time, I'm afraid we're going to settle uh, the political uh, uh, political race the way ben we Ben Johnson, thank you.